Hello, beautiful people. It's Coach Ted in here, a neurotransformational life coach and a founder of learningpretzel.com. In this episode, fifth episode of the home of growth, I will be flying solo. My very dear friend, Coach Marion Baldwin, who usually does the videos with me, is really busy upholding her responsibility and engaging in something very creative to bring to you. What is it and what are the details? I will leave that for her to share with you in the following episodes. But in the meantime, to uphold my promise to you of delivering content weekly and also taking this opportunity of being able to respond to some frequently asked questions and some emails we have received in the meantime, I thought that this would be a great chance to do that. Now, I also want to stress how grateful we are for all of you guys who have reached out. We do may want to make sure that this is a dialogue, not a monologue. Yes, we have so much to share with you, but we love hearing your feedback. We love hearing, for example, what Jessica said in her email, that the relationship episode revealed, like, yield her a very different perspective on how she's actually relating to a lot of things, which explained to her a lot of resistance. I hear you, Jessica. It's sometimes all it takes is that one time we hear the message. It might be the 50th or 60th time we hear it, but it's just the way somebody says it. It's just a moment in life when we hear that message that's so incredibly powerful and suddenly lands and opens up this perspective. I love that. And I really appreciate that sharing with, with us. Peter also sent us an email say, saying that he wasn't fully uh, he wasn't fully clear on what the personal development was and what the personal growth the difference of it was. He would still love to understand a little bit more, but right now he really loves the fact that we take a holistic approach, and I hear that. I hear it, brother, because holistic approach in whatever you do is really important. Why? Because we need to really, whenever we embark into something in our life, whether it's a job, whether it's an experience, whether it's a personal growth, whatever, whatever we do, we really need to take a holistic approach. Because you see, as we specialize in the past centuries and decades on finding out so much about an individual aspect of our life, what we ended up doing is that we ended up specializing in so many alienated and isolated things, but we forgot that all of them are part of a human life and a human existence. And we do need to take that into account. And I understand that, especially when it comes to the emotional side, you know, emotions can be difficult when you don't know how to navigate through your emotions and how to express them and how to process through them. It might just seem like a really good solution just to brush through them quickly, just to avoid them or, or, or just to move on, move on very, very quickly, just so we can, you know, keep engaging and keep engaging in our, our, our high producti productivity level. But the problem with that is that it's a very short-lived game. Let me put it in a context. Moving through life without expressing and processing your emotions is like building a house and rushing through building foundations. You would never do that, building a house, because you know that the construction would be weak, that the structure of it wouldn't be stable and it would pose a risk as soon as there's something from the outside came in to pose a threat. And it's exactly the same thing with emotions. When we don't process our emotions, we keep suppressing things into our basement. But just as we said in the other episode about blowing the smoke into the chimney, whatever metaphor we're gonna do it, emotions buried alive and unresolved never die. And they only ferment and fester. And at some point, they're going to resurface. And the more we suppress them, the longer we bury them for, the harder it's going for us to process them.
And I hope that that makes sense to you and that this message comes across very clear because when it comes to personal development and a personal growth, a lot of it is to do with emotional resistance. The reason is changing your life is very, very simple. It's very simple. You state what it is, you find out what you need to do and you do it. Three aspects of it. Identify a diagnose, make a plan, act on the plan. Super simple solution. Is it easy? No, it's not easy because we have so many relationships with the actions we need to take. We have so many emotions attached to so many different parts of it that that's what creates the whole difficulty. And this is where working with a coach, for example, comes in so tremendously beneficial. Here's the thing. Who needs a coach? You might not need a coach. You might be well able to find that all out by yourself. And if you do, I cheer for you. Absolutely. Share it with us. Send us a me message. Maybe just even send us, send us an email explaining like, how did you go about it? What did you do? And all of that. We love sharing those inspiring stories. But a lot of people, and if you are like majority of us, you know, we sometimes get so stuck inside of that perspective that we don't necessarily see how we can get out of it because we're inside of it. And a coach is the person that has the 360 perspective that is able to show you what's in your blind spots, what is in the perspectives you're not currently accessing there. And the interesting part is they don't necessarily need to be better at doing whatever it is that, they're, that, that, that you are really good at and you are currently stuck in. What they just need to do is they need to be focused on you, see what you're doing and seeing what else is there that you might be possibly omitting. And that is the power of it. And coach, because it's the external force and it's not emotionally attached to some of the resistances there, is able to stimulate you, to provoke you, to ask questions, to challenge those things, to enable you to see a different perspective. And then as a follow-up, make a personal plan, and as you go through this personal plan, keep you accountable and find out what other roadblockers and obstacles you're hitting. Turn them into opportunity of growth and keep you in emotion. Now, you might not necessarily need a coach, but let me tell you this. If there's something you've been struggling with in, in, in your life for a while, and you've tried all sorts of things by yourself, with your friends, with whatever, right? You've tried it because you're smart, you're not sitting still, you want to do something. And if that has still hasn't come true for you, then I can tell you that working through it with a coach is going to be the most beneficial thing. Now, you might work with me, and if you do, reach out there's a description below where you can find out how to how to connect with with myself or if you want to reach out to Miriam you will find that in the link in the description as well however the most important thing is that you don't stay put when you know there's more to your life because and this is what really this is what really hits me, you know, that there's so many people that know are capable of more. There's so many people that they know they want more from life. And they also, there's so many people that just know the life they live is not the life that they're enjoying. And that's not the life that they actually want to live. And yet, because of some programming, because of some limiting beliefs, because of some other different things, like the environments they're in, they're not taking action. And they just settle in for, well, I, that's just the way I am. Let me say this. If it works for you, continue. But if your life is not how you want to live, if there is something in your life you know you're capable of doing and you're not doing it, then do reach out. Because there's so much that's possible inside of your life that you're just not aware yet. 
graveyards are filled with people who kept saying, I wish. I don't know a single story where a person doesn't say, I wish I took more chances. I wish I worked on my confidence. I wished I have done this. I wished I have done that. On the other side, I can tell you about every single client that I work with. Some of them have ginormous breakthroughs and some of them just unlock a part of themselves they were never able to unlock because of whatever reasons they've gone through in life. And their life changes drastically. It just changes into such a huge, huge, huge joy of just being alive, of not experiencing the pains, of not experiencing the limitations, of not hearing any longer, I wish. You see, we take a lot what happens in life for a contract, like a lifetime contract where in fact what we do in our life very often is a subscription base that at any time you can cancel and move on without it and is it easy no it's simple but it's not easy and coach can help you with that and look what do you do it it's your choice i can only advocate for you the freedom, the liberation, the joy, the excitement of being on the other side of experience. I can't advocate for you the decision you need to make because that is a, your decision to make. And when you are ready to take life in your hands, when you are ready to invest in yourself, you reach out. And whether it's me or whether it's another coach, whether it's Miriam, whether it's somebody else you already know and you want to work with, but up, and up, up until now, you needed to hear this perspective of investing in yourself. And that's what I'm here for. I'm glad to be of service. Just promise me one thing. You'll give yourself this opportunity. And I know. I know inside of your head, you might be fighting a lot of resistance, a lot of negative thoughts. Click on the link below. Schedule a free consultation. Let's talk about it. Let's explore it. Let's see if those thoughts are valid or if they are just an expired story so you're used to repeating. Whatever it is that's happening for you, we can help you navigate through that. And I really want to make sure that you know that this opportunity is out there because one of the best things is that, you know, if you live a good life, we all benefit from it. Your family, your children, your nieces, your nephews, your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors, your, your community, the universe, everyone benefits when you're living a good life. So don't leave your potential for after potential for afterlife because there's no use of it in there. You still have this life to get through. If you believe in afterlife, well, think that you need to get through this life first before you get there. Leah, in her email, said that she wasn't too sure what this holistic approach means. And I'd like to explain that because it's really important. When we grow, when we develop ourselves, when we embark on the personal development and personal growth, we need to address multiple areas very often of our life. And as we said earlier, it can be very simple, but it's not always easy. And a holistic approach basically takes all of you into an account. How do you feel emotionally, physically, mentally? What's your environment like? Why does it matter? It's because all of it affects what we do and how we show up in life. And the reason why holistic approach is so tremendously important is because we know through experience in history that isolating a one side of a human without taking the rest of it into an account doesn't create a lasting result. If you want to change where you are, transform your life, transform your work situation, your relationships, whatever it is that you need some help with, you can't look at just one isolated part of you. 
because it just doesn't work that way. You need to take into consideration your entire self. It's like trying to go for a jog without the swollen ankle. Like you can't do that. And when you are omitting so many different parts of you, what happens is that you fixate on one thing, but as soon as the circumstances change in another area of your life, if you haven't worked through this issue in those areas of your life as well, then as soon as those in circumstances and environment changes, you're going to go right back into the beginning where you're not going to know how to move forward. And that is precisely why we need to take a holistic approach to personal growth that is exactly why we need to take a holistic approach and also holistic approach also means that we are making sure that we maintain an overall well-being so it's not just about looking at our physical fitness it's about our mental fitness emotional fitness all of that spiritual fitness, all of the things that as we move to next levels of ourself, we are able to integrate all those different parts of ourself. Now, holistic can mean different things for other people, for different people. It's not always the same for everyone because we are all different and we are very unique, but we all moving through life holistically create a lasting change. So what for some person is going to be in the first priority and for another one is going to have no importance needs to be taken into an account. And that's why a personalized game, a personalized game plan is so tremendously important. Let me put it this way. Good life coach can do the same for your life as a good fitness coach does for your physique for your fitness and for your health. If you want to be fit, if you want to have a fit, you know, healthy body that's like, you know, robust and spring and is able to do a lot of different things, well, then you need to have a good fitness coach or you need to have a very, very good fitness plan tailored for you, where you are in your life, what, what you're engaged with, what are your other commitments to make sure that it's realistic, that it's doable, that it works for you, that it brings you joy, because there's no point of just killing yourself like you're a minor all your life. That's not where the joy is. And that's not what creates a sustainable, actually, motivation and desire and passion to keep moving forward. So a good life coach can do that for you. Look at where you are. Find different ways where you know, you can really thrive in, in those situations and really create that lasting change and put that in emotion in a way that you can maintain that so you do not develop a dependency on your coach, that you build actually a strength, resilience, reliance upon yourself. It's okay to rely on your coach. I often say that to people. I've got you for as long as it needs until you've got yourself when you've got yourself that's where things really start to change the last thing that i want to make sure that we talk about is one of the things that myself and miriam keep hearing quite a lot when we work with a coach how does it look like and how long does it take this question is incredibly valid and i hear you and i hear you and here's a couple of things that i want to say to answer to that the first thing is that our brains are designed to protect us and to preserve our scarce resources. One of our scarce resources is our attention and it's our energy. But it's also the sense of evaluation if things are worth our effort, if they are worth what we are putting in, are we getting enough out? And our mind wants to know step number one, two, three, five, four, six, four, <laughs> let's take out, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to a hundred, right? And the reason why our mind wants to know that is because it wants to automate our movement through this process 
so we don't have to pay a conscious attention. And in a really demanding times like today, where our attention is bombarded from every single angle of our life, every single minute of our functioning, our mind is paying attention to something. It's part of life. So our brain even more pressures, put, puts even more pressure to automate and predict you know, all of the things that we need to do. And it does that out of advocacy to look after ourselves and to really maintain that, you know, preservation of our energy and attention. But the challenge with that is that when we embark on a change, we cannot predict exactly the whole path. We can't because it's impossible. Yes, if you want to decide, like, how do you, you know, proceed through a mathematical equation? Yes, there's a very strict path. But when it comes to working on your life, working on yourself, on your thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and all of that, very often we are so uniquely programmed and so individually that there's no one size fits all cookie cutter approach to resolve that. So no one can really tell you how long is it going to take for you to get over something or how long is it going to take you to process through something but what i need you to know is this through work with a coach we always focus only on the next step forward because that's all we need and here's why when we imagine how does the journey look like? We play with theory and we make a plan that's hypothetical because we're just making a plan about something that hasn't been materialized yet. We haven't been there yet, so it's strictly hypothetical. It's plan. It's all in the air. It's not confirmed. So when we create those plans and when we create all of those steps and that perception that this is how it should look like, we also create a lot of expectations and assumptions that this is how it will look like. And not everyone, but many people hold on to this perception and those assumptions too tight. And that two harmful, seriously harmful things that can happen when we do that. Number one, when we get through step number one, where we are at step number one can change what we need to do in step number two. Because when we keep moving through every little step, we change, we become different people. But the steps we have designed in the beginning of our journey were designed from a perspective of a person that hasn't been there. So when we get to point number three, point number four, five, and six are completely irrelevant because they're, they're steps from a perspective that's no longer applicable to us. That's no longer who we are. So the journey very often involves creating and developing and discovering all of those steps just as we move through them. And the reason why it's so important to work through them with a coach is because coach can see the outside the Barnister perspective of where else can you go, can challenge you, can see things that you're not seeing. And for some of you, it's going to be unnecessary, but for some of you, that might be the key ingredients to make it happen and not to struggle with it for another decade. Guilty. I've been there myself struggled for a decade, for a decade with things that I was able to resolve with a coach over a couple of months. Mind blowing. The second dangerous part is that some people are so scared of getting off the path, which so often happens. Why? Because when we have an idea of how the journey should look like and we do something that's different, we get this sensation that we judge as we are off the track because we are not doing what we have pre-decided is the only right way to do. And the reason why that is so difficult is because very often people 
get off the predetermined and predecided path to go the other way. And because it doesn't match their assumptions and perception of how the journey should look like, they actually get off the right track back into the wrong track. And that's how a lot of the challenge is being created. And I've seen so many people, I've met so many people who naturally their souls are, you know, drawing them into the paths that are right for them, into the detours, into the little crevices of the journeys that we judge as a waste of time, that we judge as unnecessary. But the truth is that your soul knows what it needs to learn. Sometimes you need to do a little detour. You need to take two steps left to do two steps right to get back into where you were. But over those two steps to the left is exactly where you needed to go to find that piece of puzzle that was missing, that lesson that you were meant to learn. But we have this judgment that if we go off it, if we don't move in a straight line forward, it's just not working. And you see, we tend to get off the right tracks because it feels wrong. And the reason it feels wrong is because we're doing something that we're exploring, because we're outside of a comfort zone, because we're out in the unknown. And we judge that as the wrong thing to do. We're in fact sticking to what we know in this case is the wrong thing. Because Even the definition of um, Albert Einstein, who said that insanity is doing the same thing the same way over and over again and expect a different result, just puts us into a context where we realize that if I keep doing the same thing over and over again, and if I keep following what feels familiar and known, there's no way I'm going to get to a new road. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, if you keep going the same paths, if you keep imagining the same and, and planning the same journeys over and over again, you're not going to get into a new land. And that's where you need to go if you want to truly change your life. And then in order to go there and really be wholesome and make sure that when you enter this land, you've got you. Like, you know how to find yourself in there. That's why you need to go there holistically. That's why you need to take all parts of you because you're entering a different part of your life. And it so often feels strange and we so often judge it. Yes, it's the best thing we can do for ourselves. So my question for you, if that's you, and I'd love you to pop a comment and let me know if you can resonate with what I've been talking about the past few minutes. So my question for you is then, if that's the case, then my question for you is, what are the chances that something bad is gonna happen there? And even if the chances are quite high, like how, how long lasting are they going to be, the consequences? And who would you be? if it was the mistake or the experience, the unsuccessful experience that you needed to become the successful person you're destined to be. How many times would you choose to take that unsuccessful path, to go through this unsuccessful experience, to create the success and become the person you're supposed to be? With this in mind, I want to thank you for your time and for your attention. I really appreciate all of you, whenever you're tuning in, we really appreciate with Miriam your communication. We really appreciate all of the things that you share with us in your emails. We choose not to bring all of them upon your request because we both respect very much the fact that you're sharing so personally and vulnerably and we also understand that this is the nature of the challenge we talk about personal stuff and not everybody is willing to share that into open and public especially if you're just exploring it for yourself for the first time
But we just want you to know that we we get the messages and, and, and we really appreciate them. So we want to encourage you to reach out, to put a comment, to send us an email, whatever, whatever form feels comfortable for you, whatever form feels just, you know, sitting well with you, just make sure that you don't stand silent. Um, there's a lot of links in the description of this video below. So make sure you check them out. There's links to some free exercises. There's links to how to find us, how to connect with us. So make sure that you check them out. And once again, sending you love, peace and kind winds your way, wishing you all the best support, kind love and prosperity that you can only welcome in your life right now. And I already look forward to speak to you in our next episode. Take care.